appreciate being here tonight. I know there's a lot of um, experts and folks who do great care for children in this room. The perspective I'm taking is I'm a medical provider, a primary care pediatrician that serves over 500 um, gender diverse and gender fabulous persons in the Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New England area. And what I can say is this, in my experience, and I'm not going to go over statistics and data, although I have some really nice materials for you if you want to take back later, that there is incredibly strong, consistent support that in the medical, psychiatric, and the social work literature that kids who are supported as their authentic self thrive. And when we reject and discriminate against kids because of who they are, whether it's gender or sexual minority status, they suffer. And I think you framed it very nicely in that our LGBT and trans kids, they do, they suffer the most in terms of discrimination, in terms of bullying, harassment, and safety issues at school. This, um, this right to safe schools, safe homes is so important. And we know that it leads to long-term protective outcomes in terms of HIV, suicidality, um, depression, anxiety, so socioeconomic status. If you can't go to school, that's one of the big um, factors in terms of being able to thrive economically. So I look at this as a health and human service, um, a, a basic civil right that our kids need safe places to learn, safe places to go to school. I think the other really good news about this um, is that there's really no evidence to the contrary that that the, their presence in respecting a diverse population of kids affects other cisgender or other youth adversely. And I think it's really important to remember that when we're talking about spaces like bathrooms and locker rooms, private should be private. And every kid, cisgender and trans, deserves their privacy and their respect. Thank you. Thank you very much.